Hi there, welcome to my views and news. A viewer from the US contacted me yesterday. He's been watching me for years, uh, watched me throughout uh, the two year long war in uh, Tagaray. He said, Sajid, please shed some light on the strength of Ethiopian PM now. Especially uh, if you compare PM RB of 2020 and PM RB of 2024. How do you see the Prime Minister of Ethiopia? Is he stronger? Is he weaker? What about his strength in relation to the strength of those who want to remove him? Uh, I promised uh, to him, I said, I'll do a detailed video on that because I liked uh, the question which he asked. So this video is for that viewer and others too who want to understand. I also wanted to think about it in detail so that I could be clear. So uh, I think when we want to compare PMRB of 2020 and PMRB of 2024, we should measure PMRB strength militarily and politically how strong was he militarily in 2020 and politically how strong is he now militarily and politically and secondly uh, uh, the comparison between rb's strength and opposition group strength firstly 2020 uh, in 2020, when a war broke out in northern Ethiopia, PMRB, PMRB's northern command, military's northern command was attacked by Tigray forces, Tigray fighters, TPLF members. Several bases in Tigray were stormed. Militarily, Abi was weak. No doubt about that. Tigrayan generals, seasoned generals uh, were establishing Tigray military. They were hoping they would reach Addis Ababa. Militarily, he was weak. But uh, Eritrean support made up for that weakness. Eritrea supported Ethiopia militarily. And uh, we saw that entire country arose against uh, TPL. Uh, PMRB's war on Tigray got immense support from Amhara region, from Oromia, from other parts of Ethiopia. Why? Because TPLF remained in power for decades. People maybe did not want to see TPLF back in Addis Ababa. And PMRB's government launched a narrative very effectively, the TPLF wanted to seize power again. So, militarily, he was weak. ENDF was weak. RB was weak. But uh, Eritrean support, support from uh, regions, regional forces, uh, helped uh, RB in. Uh, in uh, fulfilling the military needs. Politically, he was strong, I think. In 2020, militarily, he was weak. Politically, he was strong. Why? Because uh, when the war was, uh, war broke out in northern Ethiopia, almost entire Amhara region stood behind him. Opposition, uh, ruling Prosperity Party, one no, everyone supported PMRB. Groups in um, Romia too supported him, groups in other parts of Ethiopia. So, political parties supported him as well. Some issued statements, but no major opposition to the Prime Minister of Ethiopia in 2020. So, I think politically, he was strong. Militarily, he was weak. And politically, he was strong because people didn't want to see TPLF back in Addis Ababa. Now, 
2024. Now I believe PM Abi is strong militarily. ENDF has come a long way. People say ENDF is about to collapse. Uh, ENDF is splitting, uh, but I believe today's ENDF is a stronger force than it was in 2020. More advanced weapons, drones, combat drones, more modern combat drones, which change the battlefield balance in support of military. Military has more combat drones now, battlefield experience as well. Military has learned to survive without TPLF, without uh, Tegarai channels too. Military is making large scale recruitments. Uh, military raising militias, regional forces being integrated into military, into police, etc. We cannot say that ENDF is the strongest military in Africa, like Jula says, but today's ENDF, I believe, is a stronger Ethiopian national defense force if you compare it with the ENDF of 2020. But so we can say Abi is stronger in 2024 militarily. But Abi is weaker politically in 2024. He has lost Amhara region. Groups in Amhara region want to remove him. <clears throat> Even his prosperity party members are finding it difficult to support him in the Amhara region. Prosperity party members being arrested in the Amhara region. Prosperity party members scared. Military is trying to restore law and order in the region. Prosperity party is nowhere to be seen. So he has lost Amhara region. Uh, yes, uh, prosperity party members still support him. Why? Because if they don't support him, they'll be put in prisons. In, uh, he, he lost Amhara. Amhara was behind him in 2020, politically. Now, he's lost Amhara, I think. Oromia. In 2020, Oromia was split. I believe that uh, because he had dismantled Kios, uh, Ola was fighting. So, Oromia, uh, some groups in Oromia believed that Abi was not loyal to Oromia. Because he had disbanded Kiyo. He had put uh, Jawar, Beklegarba, Hamza Buran, and others in presence. Oil of leaders too. So, Oromia saw him as supportive of Amhara narrative. But after Pretoria deal, we saw that uh, Abi and uh, Amhara elite drifted apart. And then Abi's decision to disband Amhara special forces was uh, last nail in the coffin and uh, uh, Amhara forces took up arms, uh, militia members against Abi. So he's facing a real challenge from Amhara. Oromia still split. Groups in Oromia support him. Uh, I think in Oromia, politically he's in a stronger position now. Why? Because of Fano's uh, a resurgence. Fano's increased activities and ambitions are being viewed very closely in Oromia. Oromos won't let Fano set foot in Oromia, no matter what happens. Fano can only set foot in Oromia if uh, Ola strikes a deal with Fano, which so far has not happened. We don't know if it, it will happen or not. Things can change, but so far, no signs of such deal. Oromos have decided that they won't let Fano set foot in Romeo. And they know that Abi wants to crush Fano. So that is why in Oromia, though people still say that Abi uh, destroyed Kyo, he is uh, killing Oromos, imprisoning Oromos, uh, killing Ola members, still. 
they support Abi because they believe that uh, uh, Abi is trying to crush those groups which are in Amhara and they and the groups want to reach Adi Sabha. So he has more public support in Romia. Politically, he's stronger in Romia. So we can sum up today's Abi politically weaker, militarily stronger, lost Amhara region. Romia split. Tigray uh, watching like a spectator, playing with its cards close to its chest. Standing army of more than 200,000. Tigray does not want to be part of any conflict. It does not want to wage war. Rome is going around, but I believe Tigray uh, does not want to be part of any war now. So you see, uh, that Abi, uh, 2020 Abi politically stronger, militarily weaker. Today's Abi militarily stronger, politically weaker. What about Abi's rivals? The groups, the parties, opposition parties, uh, armed groups, are they stronger now if you compare their current strength and strength of 2020? Well, uh, Ola is a stronger force today. Ola made the most of uh, Tregarai war. It silently upgraded its capabilities. Pano definitely a stronger force today than it was in 2020. Today's Pano is turning into a well-organized armed group consisting of several uh, subgroups posing a serious challenge to the government, to Prime Minister's uh, forces. Pegarae, as I said earlier, more than 2,000 soldiers still not demobilized. So his rivals and political parties, opposition parties, uh, on the run, not allowed to operate freely because opposition parties have not taken clear positions they want to come to power, but they don't want to risk their lives. Opposition leaders. Jawar out of country, back like Arab, said goodbye to politics. Uh, Professor Viragadina uh, remained silent. Daud Ibsa uh, in prison under house arrest. Uh, ONLF issue, issues, issues statements only. DPLF not happy with the government. Uh, wants restoration of its status, but no genuine threat from, from DPLF. Opposition parties are not united. That is the main uh, point. Opposition is not united. Imagine, Tegarai forces, Ola, Fano, strike in allies. If it happens, how long can Abi stay in power? Abi will have to go. Imagine uh, TDF, Ola, Fano, ONLF, OFC, OLF, uh, other groups in Ethiopia, the strike and alliance, political, military alliance, they decide to remove the Prime Minister. Can Abi? then stay in power? No, definitely not. Problem is that though his opposition groups, political armed groups are stronger now than they were in 2020, but they're split. There is no unity. And that is what Abi's plus point is. That though he is politically weaker, militarily stronger, opposition is split. If opposition remains split, Abi won't face uh, a serious challenge to his rule. So that is how, how I see today's Abi and the Abi of 2020. Now, if you want to take the discussion to a little uh, higher level to talk about the regional situation, Again, today's Abi is 
weaker uh, politically regionally abi has lost isaias abi has lost somalia abi has lost burhan uh, abi uh, has lost all the regional players no one is on abi's side jabuti ismail umar again uh, not on very good terms with abi so regionally too he is weak now weaker if you compare two days abi and uh, 2020s abi but coming back to main point opposition is split no unity and that is why abi is in power thanks for watching